Hey Raiders, welcome back to another Jer Bernicorn live arena video. This one will cover seven fights where I get five wins. So on to the first fight, I get the first pick and go Sifi. He takes Warlord and Ultimate Death Knight, probably to block a Rotos, which I don't have. I'll go Wukong and Necret. Necred is a great way, as are any ally attackers, to get around Ultimate Death Knight. The next best one is probably Cardial. I'm going to add in Mithrala, who I recently built. Recently rebuilt. Increased her speed, put her in bolster. So they're going Mighty Uko and Hefrak. See who their last damager is. Right now I'm looking, I have to ban the Warlord. I don't have a fight through Warlord strategy. So I ban the Warlord, they ban Wukong. So we'll get started. See what happens with Mighty Yuko here. He's very disruptive. And they took out my disruptive Nuker. Mithrald can be rough. And then again, I forget that Ultimate Death Knight's in there and what he does. Tried to sleep the Mithrald. Mishald. I don't have him, so you'll have to excuse me for not getting his name right. Okay, Uko goes for the strip, stuns the Sifi. If I can just kill the Uko, Uko's gone. That's good. Got the Mashald. This one's looking pretty good to start. And lots of fears up. But I'm able to cleanse it with Mithrala, so that was a good pickup. I just have a couple of stone skins to wade through. Protect the Sifi just in case. Try to steal the stone, stone skin. Could not. Did, got the other two buffs, but couldn't get the stone skin. The reason Wukong is so good at stealing stone, stone skin is because he steals buffs from everybody, as long as he has the accuracy. Errol only does it from the one, so it's a 50% chance. But say you have the accuracy on Wukong, and it's a 50% chance times four, that's 50% of 50% of 50% of 50% of not getting it, and you're usually going to get a stone skin. So I take that one, moving on to the next one. We've got Dex 3000. Borderline onto Gold 2. Starts off with a Harima, does not want me to have, have her. I'll go Sifi. I don't want to see Sifi paired with Harima. I go Wukong. Wukong is a good counter to Harima. Uko and Warlord again. Same two slots as the last time. We'll go Necret and I'll go Ragash. I'm working on a Hoskarill, Hoskarul, and I'll show him later. Uh, he's still kind of ineffective. I don't have him fully built yet. He's booked. Need to get him to 60 and need to finish his masteries. All right. So I'll bend the Warlord. We got Rhonda, we got Rock of Vile Tide, so double double damager or double revive. And then of course Harima's good. Get started on this one. And they'll go first. So Rocka starts off. Put some hex on him. And Mighty Yuko's gonna strip. Going for the kill on Raka, don't get it. I probably should have protected my Ragash there. Go for the big hit. Still don't kill Raka. If I can get Raka out of there while Mighty Uko's petrified, I have a good shot at winning this. But there's the cleanse and the shield. That's what she's good at. I was so close to having Raka down. This one, I don't have a good feeling about this fight because I just narrowly missed that Raka. And there's the sheep on Necret. So I got two sheeps out there. I still got my damager. Go for the Uko. Still can't kill that Raka. Raka should revive Mighty Uko here. Beware the Harima. And Mighty Uko's back. I want to kill Mighty Uko again. And there goes my Ragash. So I'm out of Ragash. I'm almost out my Mithrala. Waiting to get my Necret back. And Necret's back, but everybody's almost dead. This one's almost done. And there goes Uko again. 
and everybody's protected, this one's a loss. Can't overcome that. Almost had that. If I had just been able to finish off Raka, then I would have had that fight. But I couldn't. She kept him alive. The survivability goes up big time when you have Raka in there. And they held on. So on to the next fight. Dolphin cuz. See who they go with first. So they go mighty, or they go Wukong, excuse me, first to make sure I don't get him. So I go Seafy Warlord. They go Rodos to make sure I don't get Rodos. And they go Hefrak. The nice thing about Wukong, using him as a support opposite me, is he's not that survivable. survivable. Yeah, he'll pop back up, but I get a lot of chances in between. And then they go Ultimate Death Knight and Mortimer Cobb. This is a weird team. So they got multiple damagers. Rodos is hard to kill. Hefrak is probably in Stone Skin. I would almost bet Wukong is in is a damage build. And then the failsafe is Mortimer Cobb. But I I ban the Mortimer Cobb because I know I'm going to be doing a lot of big hits here. AoEs. So they ban my Warlord. I have my Inithwe. He's pretty fast. So, put up the buffs. This time I remembered, UDK's in there. Wukong steals the buffs but doesn't hurt anybody. I kill the Rodos, and Hefrak doesn't take anybody out. Then I take out the Wukong. He can't come back. So now it's all about waiting through this stone skin and surviving it. Let's see what? Yep. Took out my two damagers, but Seafy's unharmed. Protect the Seafy. Bring somebody back, but not yet. Didn't want him to get knocked back down. A Hefrak's pretty tough, but I think I got this. I'm still going to wait because I didn't want a Ultimate Death Knight to go first in fear or something like that. I couldn't remember if he'd used it. So now I can bring somebody back. I bring Errol, go with the double smash. And this one will be over. Oh, this is where it froze. I get the reconnect error, he error here. What I do during this is I don't exit and log back on immediately. I give it some time, and I'm hoping that the AI will just finish it out. So I go back in, check to see how I did. I did finish it. I didn't get the satisfaction of seeing it finished, but I did finish it. So on to the next battle. Fortunately, the, there was only one thing left to do there, that it was going to hit the A2 no matter what, and the A2 was going to kill his Hefrak. And then he probably left the battle. If he didn't leave the battle, I might have timed out and lost. So he picks first. 2799. Fairly recent into gold. Picks Seafy. Seafy only one star and has sheep. That's it's either a mistake to have sheep or it's a mistake to have accuracy. One of the two. So I go Warlord Wukong. Hope he doesn't take Necrit. See who he picks here. All right. Full survivability. So this is looking like a block revive champion, but I can't pick him yet. I have to wait. Triple reviver, the prime mitigating revivers, healing revivers. So go Goffred. I just don't know who he's going to pick. So I have to decide on my last support. And I'll go Mithrala, so I'm going no reviver here. It's tough, though, to go Mithrala instead of Seafy because then definitely Warlord's getting banned, and I don't have a Reviver in that case. Normally, if I have Seafy and Warlord gets banned, then I at least have a fast Reviver. So we'll see who he goes with his two damagers. I feel pretty good about this matchup, but that doesn't mean anything. 
And he runs out of time again. Taurus and Mordu Macab. So I'm going to ban the Taurus. Hopefully he doesn't ban my Anithway. Anithway is really my win condition here. So if he bans my Anithway, I'm in trouble. Man, he just takes forever. Each turn. He banned my Warlord, so I do have a win condition. But... So this one, I remember how this one goes. So Mithrala is going to go first. And I have a very low chance of triggering Peril when I don't target him with her A1. When I don't target Mortal Macabre. Go for the A1. Hit him and, and triggered it. So this fight's done. He's probably, I think he's going to go ahead and hit my Anithway, and then my win condition's gone. Right here, though, still, if I could sheep him, if I could get a turn with Wukong and sheep him before Duchess goes, I have a chance. And then Duchess goes. So I can't sheep him. He'll kill my Anithway, and I'm done. It's possible I could have fought through that, but it's highly unlikely. So I just left it. I didn't want to waste my time on that fight. That was a situation where, what is it, 20% chance of triggering peril. So that's an okay chance if you hit him directly. But it's a 25% chance of actually hitting him with the second random shot from Mithrala. So I'm like, okay, 5% chance overall of triggering peril, and I triggered peril. That was it. So I had a 5% chance of losing right off the bat, and I lost. So this guy, he's got Wukong, and then the strong duo, the strong free-to-play duo of fusions, Mighty Uko and Pytheon. And then he's got a strong damager. So it's looking like Wukong might be a damager. I'm going to ban the Baron, though, and assume Wukong is kind of a hybrid. He banned my Warlord, not my Anithway. So now it's just kind of up to what happens with Mighty Uko, and can I block revive on the Wukong? How fast is the Wukong? So I go first. Could have slept somebody. One stun on Necret, but that's not a big deal. Wukong doesn't do a lot with his strip, so he was just not a damager. Go ahead and kill the Wukong. He's gone. So the next one that's actually a threat is the Brogni. Brogni is often built for clan boss. Got the triple stun from Mighty Yuko there, and Brogni is working us down a little bit. This is where Hoskarul would have been really good because he could have cleansed all three of those stuns. And then I would have got another shot on Anithwe. So Ragash, almost dead. Go for the big hit. Take out those two, and we're golden. Try to take out the Pytheon real quick, but there it goes. Take a look at this chest here. They're good as random pieces right now, but you get so many blues, even in gold, that it's just not really... They're not viable sets until you've done a lot of battles. So I sell most of them. Guess I'll keep that one. Keep a couple of them. So. Three out of five so far. Then I take a break. Take a look at... Inithway Blood Twin here. I've got him up to 237 speed. 250 crit damage. Almost 7,000 attack. So he's pretty strong. Start a couple more fights. I'll pick Sifi going first. And they're going speed, Arbiter, Kaimar. So Kaimar is my first pick to ban right now, but I do try to set up for what to do if they pick Yumiko. And if it's Yumiko, then... I try to have a damager that Kaimar can't strip a stone skin off of. That's my arrow. 
Now, it's different here with Lady Kimmy. Lady Kimmy doesn't matter the affinity because Lady Kimmy doesn't do a hit with her buff strip. But she usually has less accuracy than Kaimar. Her increased accuracy would increase the chance of decreased defense and stun for Ragash. So I think I'll ban her. Lady Kimmy is not a particularly strong Liberina pick, unless you're a bomb team. But, oh, I decided not to ban her at the last second. I did end up going with Kaimar. I decided that Kaimar's sleep was worse than Lady Kimmy's slow and block, buff, block buffs. So she does not strip a stone skin, and my Wukong's dead. Warlord almost died, but got him on cooldown, but Arbiter did resist. I didn't catch that during the fight. Go for the first hit, go for the finish, and then Arbiter gets a chance to revive. Lady Kimmy will get a shot. Heal up a little bit. Kill the Arbiter and kill everybody else. All right, on to the next fight. Climbing the ranks, Fabrizio 66. So this one's barely into gold. 27-12, and starts off with a Duchess and a Marichka. It's better they have Duchess Marichka than Sifi Marichka. So I go Warlord, and surprise, surprise, do I pick Wukong? And they've got the Taurus Marichka mix, along with Rodos and Duchess. That is a tough group already, and depending on who else he adds, I'm going to have a hard time with this. I rebuilt my Helicath recently, but if he's a non-factor, I won't even show his build. Yumiko, got to ban the Yumiko. This one's going to be tough. Uh, I think here about just leaving the fight because I don't think I can win this. They banned my Helicath, and that's the one that's going to save me from damage. Put him on cooldown, and Warlord's dead. I don't even think I bring back Warlord during this fight. Go for the kill on Rodos and got him. Steal some buffs. Stole a stone skin, so Wukong's still there. And Nithwe's gone. It's hard to manage Taurus. Like, you almost have to kill Marichka first and tank through the hits, and the stone skin saved him again, but now it's gone. Marichka's a sheep, but she'll be right back. Bring back a Nithwe. He'll get a hit. Can I take out the Marichka? I can. And he's dead again. So now it's whether or not Taurus can take out my Seafy. Get some annoying sleeps out there. And now Taurus is hidden. Buff up a little bit. Steal some buffs so he doesn't hit so hard. Well, he didn't have the AoE up anyway. Only took about 35% off my Seafy, so he's not a super heavy hitter. Go for the hit. Got the Duchess out of there, so now it's all about managing the Taurus. Go ahead and bring a Nithwe back. Can't finish him because he just mitigates too much. Still working on it. He goes for the Seafy. This time he got a lot closer to killing her. But we got this one. He left the battle and finished it off. So that was seven fights, five wins. Pretty decent. Now I'm going to show Hosk Rule. Here's the build I've got him in right now. He's in a damage build. In Savage, he's in my Helicath's old gear. So I took that off Helicath and rebuilt Helicath yesterday. He doesn't have a lot of defense right now. I don't know what it's going to be. It'll probably still be shy of 5,000 once I get him to level 60. But he can hit. He has, he's got enough accuracy to land the stun on the people he needs to land it on, not a duchess. But as you can see here, I don't have all his masteries. Going for Helm Smasher, going for more accuracy. And he's pretty fast. He's, what, 219, I think? In his first, first uh, skill, he stuns. In his second skill, he stuns all enemies, 75% chance. In his A3, he cleanses all stuns and increases defense. So he's good against Mighty Uko there. And then his passive, he's immune to stun, and he increases the damage inflicted by allies when the enemies are under stun. So he can stun with multiple skills and then increase the damage other champions in the team do. So 
I see him as a really good Mighty Uko counter because almost everyone, 99% of people build Mighty Uko in stun. So let's see him in action. This is the only battle that I've recorded with him so far. It's, it's a 3v3 fight. And he's not really going to get a chance to stun here. And Mighty Uko, I don't think he even stuns anybody in this fight. Wukong does all the heavy lifting. Big thing is trying to keep a Nithwe from killing anyone. There's triple revivers. And I'm not going to block revive on a Nithwe because I didn't bring a block reviver. This wasn't the ideal battle for him. Because they have double block block debuffs. One cleanse. Go for the big hit again. And a Nithwe is down again. So I just got to keep killing a Nithwe in this situation. I could have tried to stun right there. But I wasn't sure where Pytheon was at with his cleansing skill. So I got Mighty Uko dead. This fight takes a little while. But... I'm pretty optimistic. I think he has a 4.1 multiplier on defense for his AoE, which is really strong. So he's a lot like Ragash in that way. For an epic, he, he's a really strong utility damager that brings a lot to the table. All right, see if I can finish off this Pytheon. He didn't really do a lot in this fight, but like I said, he's a work in progress. If I had him fully built out with all of his masteries and up at level 60, that probably would have gone faster. Hope you enjoyed the video, and take care.